And we are back. Welcome to Come On CFL, presented to you by Come On Now, the podcast, partnered with Bet99 Sports. We got another great episode this week, man. I'm coming to you live, and I'm telling you how it went. Oh, Labor Day weekend. It was some exciting football going on. I told you, if you ain't ready for this weekend, put up your mother freaking jock strap, put up your shoulder pads, turn it into the equipment, man. And go home, dog. Go home. Because we shouldn't get you hyped for this that last weekend that we just had because it, it's rivalry week. And everybody's ready to go. No hype speeches needed. Just, hey, when that 15-minute clock go off and, and that kickoff get ready to get kicked, you know it's go time. Adrenaline is flowing. Blood is flowing. And your body's going. Man, so... We got a good, I got a good episode for you this week, man. Um, We're going to dive into what happened last week, first and foremost. Then we got our power rankings. We got the old Canada Players Week. And we got Nick Pitts coming up, which I'll be 4 0 this week. It'll be a, a perfect week. I feel it. I, I got I got this thing down pat, what's going on in this league. And I'm bringing it to you right now. So last week, we start off with a beating, a smackdown. Um, not much to talk about in this game, but Nathan Rourke looks back good. He looked like he knew how to play football again. He looked like he got some time to practice, and it helped him. Look like a guy who, you know, who hasn't played football in, you know, three years and got some time to practice with his team again and got it rolling. And he looked amazing in the first half. He finished 21 for 30, three touchdowns, 325 yards, one interception. The run game gets rolling with stand back, 20 carries, 93 yards. They have really been trying to – Establish that run game because that's been a big problem for BC the past couple of years of having a run game and when it need to do it in the winter time and, and it's cold and it's freezing. How are we going to get them hard, tough yards and a hard, tough fought games? And stand back and providing that thing for him. Matthew Betts comes back, he gets a sack. I don't know how they're paying all these guys, but they're doing it. And why not? If you got a chance for a great cup in your city, Take the penalty, take the fine, let the league do whatever they got to do to you, um, tax you a little bit more as an owner. Your job is to win a championship and do whatever it can to get there. And if it's going to come with a little bit of fine when it happens, the championship is happening in your city, you got to pay a little extra dollars, then you do it. I don't know if they are over the cap, but I'm pretty sure that they might be darn near close to it. And under the circumstances, I say F it, because if your owner wasn't doing all the things to get your team to win, and it's coming out of his pocket, and he's okay with it by paying the extra fine to put a great team on the field, then you shouldn't be an owner because this is what you're going to have to do sometimes, and sometimes that's the consequences and the repercussions of trying to be great. You have to sacrifice sometimes. If it's his pocket to be a sacrifice for the ultimate good of the team, then that's what, what they got to do. And I don't give a dang. Whatever, live with it. So BC gets back in the win column after – struggling. Ottawa has a pedestrian game on the road. Let's see what they do next week. They get another chance back up. Next game go on. The Thriller in Saskilla. <laughs> I made that up. It sounded good to me. But they had a game that was a darn right, outright classic. The game came down to the end when it looked like it wouldn't. It looked like Winnipeg had control of the game. But in a whole Labor Day Sass versus Winnipeg Peg fashion in mosaic. It came down to a Brett Lofton field goal from 60. It came up short. So did Sass as they lose another game and they fall under 500. And a team that looked once destined for a great cup and in position to host the game at home, it's not looking so good right now. Can they turn the season around? I don't know, but I know who have. Winnipeg. Since the last time they played Sass, when it looked like their season was going into crap territory and they had a Toronto game when they should have won, Winnipeg has found their stride and they're back at the top of the West Division like they usually are the past three, four, five years. They find a way to make it there when we all rip, roll them off, even me. The former player who knows what goes on in that organization, who knows the type of coaches they have, I thought maybe it was time. You know, the quarterback wasn't playing as well as he normally does. The, the the star vet players were having costly turnovers, but they found a way, and they're back in it. And it looked like the Rose could go back to Winnipeg. Who would have thought? I know four or five weeks ago, I was just talking about getting a third seed. 
and BC fell off, SAS fell off, and they're in the first seat. They're in the driver's seat position. They get they get SAS again in the banjo bowl, but they pull it off 35 to 33. Zach Caleros played pretty good in the first half, and then a cheap shot by the SAS player, number 90, Miles Brown. He comes up high and he just headbutts. He headbutts Zach Caleros, not even hitting him in the target area and leading him with his head. Should have been thrown out the game. Um, that was just a bad play, but I get it. In this rivalry game, your emotions get the best of you, but who can handle their emotions in the time when your team needs you to not give up big penalty? And although that pen- that play had two penalties on it, it was going to go to the one yard. And anyway, you didn't know that. That could have been a, a big game changing play going back your way, and you got it taken off the board in a one of the biggest games of the season where all the fans are there having the time in their lives. A little bit too much of the time in their lives. As a big brawl broke out. From what I heard, it was a Winnipeg fan getting pummeled and decided to fight back. And I don't advocate for violence, but I understand defending yourself. So if the man was defending himself and that's the true story that happened, then, you know, guard your grill on the other side, Sass fan. Y'all just go out there, enjoy the game. There's two great teams playing. It's a great atmosphere. It's a college-like atmosphere. Enjoy the game, folks. Enjoy the game, fans. Uh, but and ultimately, he gets knocked out the game. Trevor Streveler comes back in the game, and all he has to do is hold down the lead, and he does that. Um, Alfred had a big fumble early in the game that gets Winnipeg a good lead, and Streveler comes in, holds it down enough, Defense come back. They give up a lot of yards to Trevor Harris, but they get the stop on the two-point conversion they needed to. Had a terrible play on the onside kick, but end of the day, you just got to survive in the mosaic And when it comes to this game because I done been in that game, and it's a great atmosphere. We pulled out one game, one win in a couple years ago, but not much success for Winnipeg there. But they get a win, and that's all that matters. They keep finding a way, finding a way, and that's what good teams do. And they're still building. They're getting everybody back, I think. Zach should be back. I think he got an under concussion protocol. He should be back, but that's a dirty hit. And it could stem back from the Big Hill hit. But Big Hill hit, he just drove him to the ground. It was still legal. Shea Patterson should have threw the ball from what my perspective. He held it too long. Did Big Hill have to drive him to the ground? No. But we know this game for years. Zach has keep getting hit in the head, headbutt, headbutt. And it's getting kind of dirty. It's, it's not good for the game, for the league at all. But it's a rivalry game. At the end of the day, Winnipeg does come out with the win. And they're back at the top of the division. Let's dive into Toronto versus Hamilton. Hamilton gets a win, 31-28. They were up 24-3 early into the second quarter. What the heck is going on? Chris Jones sighting his defense actually looked like okay. They had a lot of good schemes, and I think they confused Chad Kelly into not having a good first half. But Toronto storms back. Bo Levi has a great, good game, good game, 347, two touchdowns. Him and Tim White connection has been backballing. Like, if I'm going to go down and y'all going to keep benching me, I'm going to go down throwing it to my best receiver on the team. And my best receiver has been playing like he's been the best receiver, unlike the early in the year. And that's look, making Hamilton look good. Chris Jones has the defense looking okay. I mean, they came with some exotic blisses, and I was like, okay, I give credit when credit's due. If you do things that you should be doing, I guess he's a better defensive coordinator than running the whole team and being sort of the defensive coordinator. Maybe that might be his calling, just being a defensive coordinator. And Hamilton gets the win. They hold off Chad Kelly storming back, you know, to, to make this a great game, and Hamilton finds a way. Got to give them kudos. They've been playing well lately. Hamilton has been playing well. Is it enough to get back in the East race? Probably not. But can they get the crossover? The way the bottom of the West is looking. It's a probability. Who knows? I've seen crazier things happen in the CFL. That's why we love this sport because it's amazing. It comes down to the end. You never know what the heck is going to happen. It's, it's wild times in the CFL. But it's fun. Interesting, and it keeps us coming back for more. Oh, Labor Day weekend rivalry, Battle of Alberta.
Alberta, Battle of Alberta, Edmonton. Is this one of the top teams in the league? They look like it. Are they a playoff contender? It look like it. Are they one of the best teams in the West? It looked like it. after a terrible start to the season, they're rolling. They're playing good football. Shout out to Jerry Jackson and in the in the in the staff, the GM. They're getting good players in there. They're, they're turning things around. The players actually look like they know what they're doing under this coaching staff. They have an identity. They run the ball, but this game, Calgary stops the run early, and McLeod Bethel has a magnificent game. This is the player they were root, looking for. This is the receiving core that they thought they were going to have all year. These are the players. This is the team, the receiving core, the quarterback, the running back. They're putting it together. This is what they all thought they were going to see the whole time when they brought these players in and gave these receivers the money and the quarterback the money. Was it ignited by Trey Ford? I don't know, but something smart. McLeod, he's playing great. I got to give him love and credit when it's due because I was talking crap about my guy for not being the leader on his team and getting to prepare even on the short days of rest like he should have. Or I thought he should have when he's coming out to the media and he's making this other noise. And I'm like, well, that's not what your team want to hear. And he stepped up and he's been balling. 486 yards. That's diabolical. They get, almost had 600 yards of total offense. It wasn't like there was no run game at all. They still ran for about 100. And Calgary, Jake Myers throws four interceptions in the game. You cannot do that in this game. Turnovers, bad special team plays, penalties kill you in this league. Can't turn the ball over four times. You cannot in the spec to win. And you're playing at home. You have to be better. You have a week off. Y'all had a five week and y'all come into this game and you should have the best game plan because you had two weeks to make one up. And for y'all to come out and look lackluster like that and only score 13 points on offense, that's bad ball. Y'all have to be better in Calgary or it's going to be some head rollers. It's going to be some head rolling after this season if Dave Dickerson don't get this team back afloat before the playoffs. If they don't make it or they struggle and limp into the playoffs and lose like they did last year or we did last year, then they have to make some changes and it might be the quarterback, it might be the head coach, it might be every damn body. It's just how it how the business is. You don't win, you don't get it done, you get out of here. And unfortunate, but that's how the business go for the players and for the coaches. GMs, it, it all goes down like that. So Calgary actually has a chance in that game. Peyton Logan has a dynamic punt return. And you're like, whoa, wait a minute. And Edmonton had a lucky play in the game. Um, the Mary Houston strips Eugene Lewis, who had a big game. Good to see him back balling. And Tevin Jones picks up the fumble quickly and sprints uh, 80 yards down the field. And that ultimately gives that guy a over 200-yard receiving game. I don't know how they did the stats with that one, but he made big play after big play, and he sealed the game on a corner route and turns it up for 70 yards. Good job, Tevin. He has been a big pickup for this team. I don't know how this guy even made it to free agency and got released because he can, he can play. He's a good receiver. Great receiver in this league. Good shot out to Edmonton. They get a win in the Labor Day Classic. Can they get two? If they get another one at home this week, who look out for Edmonton? Edmonton, Winnipeg, Western Finals? <laughs> Five weeks ago, if I said that nonsense, y'all would have unsubscribed from my channel. Stop watching me. I'm a fool. But now, those two teams are there. Wow. And that was the crazy week of last week. Let me, as I break it down to y'all, everything that's going on there. Whoo, shoot. So, Let's go into the power rankings. Hmm. Things have changed. <laughs> I think the whole power rankings has flipped upside down from a few weeks ago. The top teams who were the top teams are no longer in the top spot. Things have changed. Except for Montreal. They are there. No, 
No secret about that. But at number nine, let's, let's, I had a tough decision right here to make. Hamilton Hill's been playing well. Calgary, who haven't been playing so good lately, especially at home where they've been good most of the season. I'm going to have to put Calgary at number nine. Calgary has to go at number nine because Hamilton is simply just playing better than they are right now. This is a power ranking, and the team who's getting hotter and playing better, that's what I have to relate to, and not just because they won another at last game, because they've been playing better lately. Um, so Calgary's at eight. Not winning in the five games, or, you know, SAS has to be at seven. They have been not good as a total team for a team that is in the top of the league in um, turnover ratio. Usually you win games when you are in the top of the league at turnover ratio, when you are forcing more turnovers than you're giving it up. And they are ahead of everybody by seven, eight, nine. So I don't know what's going on there, but they need to fix it. They need to fix it fast. At number six is BC. They get a good win. They deserve to be up, move up a spot, a couple spots. Toronto at five after they lost. I won't move below BC because they still have been winning lately. Edmonton at four. Edmonton's at four. Oh, my Lord. Am I going crazy? Edmonton's at four. They're playing good football, guys. As a, everything's a compliment. In the passing game, the running game, the defense is playing well. Special teams is playing decent. At number three, I'll keep Ottawa there. I'll give you one bad game. You can have those. Everybody, you flush this game. You don't even watch the film this week. You say forget that. We go on to the next game. Blah, 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 blah. Move on. And I'm going to give them the grace of, you know, the grace of a long season that you do. You have a bad game or two. At number two, Winnipeg moved all the way back up. They're playing good. Defense has been great all year. Not so good in this last game, giving up a lot of yards, but you get the win, and they keep finding ways to get the win. They're at number two. At number one, Montreal stay there after they have their bye week. That is Nick's power rankings for the CFL this week. Let's move into the next segment, and that will be Nick's O Canada, O Canada Players of the Week. I, I, these guys in Edmonton, the Elks, the past three weeks on the show, four weeks, they are doing things where they're getting both players on offense and defense as player of the week, offensive player of the week. It's got none other. I mean, it could have been Tim White. He had a great week. Could have been Tevin Jones. Could have been a couple players. But McLeod Bethel, who I've been tough on all year, about his leadership, not making the big throws when he needs to. Been playing amazing. I got to give kudos to my guy. He's been playing great. He's he's big part of the turnaround over there. That Trey Ford benching ignited a fire under him. Maybe it didn't. Maybe he always had the fire. But how it looks and how it's perceived right now is the fire has been lit, and he is doing things with the receiver, 300-yard receivers, and in, in, in my guy, um, Tevin Jones, uh, Curly Gittins and Eugene Lewis. Can he get Mitchell back going? He's been kind of falling off. But, hey, wins are wins. They're finding a way to do that, and that's good for them. On the defensive side, I'm going to have to stick with Edmonton. The guy on their, their, their DB, let me get his name right, Devon, De, Devondrick Bynum. I, I, I'm pretty – D-Bynum. D-Bynum. That's what I'm going to call you. I don't want to mess up your name, dog. Three tackles. Two picks in this rivalry game, balling out. Everywhere the ball was thrown, number 16 was around, making a play. Two PBUs or pass breakups, however you want to talk about it. The guy was everywhere doing everything. Turn the turn the turn the turn turnovers, turn the ball up into his hands twice in that game. Two picks, two INTs. Shout out to him. Shout out to D Bynum. Shout out to McLeod Bethel. Shout out to Edmonton Elks. They're balling. They're rolling. Make playoffs. Playoffs. <laughs> it looked like it, baby. Keep doing what y'all doing. I love to see y'all players ball. It's good thing in the league. To all this talent that we got in the CFL for it to be showcased. And people understand that this is not no damn playground kitty league. These are real dang ballers, and they are ball. Shout out to those two and the other players who balled but couldn't get it. The old Canada, old Canada player of the weeks this week. Only could pick two people. And those were the two. And as we wrap up this show, we're going to go into dun, 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 Nick picks for this week. I, we're, we're rolling. We're, we're, we're rolling. A lot of rematches 
this week. But the week starts off with a big one. BC versus Montreal. Montreal's at home. I'm going to take Montreal money line. Money line, and this game definitely is going over 50.5 points per game. Definitely, they're going to score a lot in this game. Rourke um, for Jardo. Ball's going to be thrown in every which way. I hope Alexander Hollins get back into the game plan. He has been MIA, one of the best receivers in the league. Doesn't look like it. But they got to get him going if they want to be a team that they were early in the season. Will it be VA back with him sooner or later for him to get back on? Probably not. So he needs to find it with Rourke unless an injury happens. So he needs to find it. But that's what I'm rolling with right there. Montreal and the points are over. Um, on Saturday, we got Toronto at Ottawa. I'm picking Ottawa to bounce back. I don't think they have two bad games in a row. I'm going money line with them. And that game, definitely going over 51.5 with Chad Kelly. How he's throwing the ball around. I think Drew Brown gets it back rolling. That game going over 51.5. Take the over. That's what I would do. Hey, it's up to you. What you want to do? Hey, this is Nick's picks, not everybody else's picks. But, hey, with the come on now, with the come on CFL, with the oh, with the bet ninety nine sporting code, get some money, you know, win. Um, we're gonna go to Sask in Winnipeg. In Winnipeg, that usually don't go well for Sask in the Banjo Bowl. I'm going with Winnipeg money line. That matter of fact, give me the minus two points. Winnipeg, Winnipeg covers that easily. I think. Well, I know. And then we got Calgary and Edmonton in another rematch. I'm going with Edmonton. They are the better team right now. Money line them. Take Edmonton for the win. And those are Nick's picks for this week of Come On CFL. Y'all, please, please subscribe. Share, 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 share. I love bringing more CFL content. I love to talk about the game, the ins and outs, what's going on, little um, schemes of different teams, players, what's going on behind the scenes, what should be happening, my perspective of games, of you know, DB point of view, receiver point of view, quarterbacks point of view. I can give it all. I love to talk about it. But that's all we got for this week's of Come On CFL presented by Come On Now, the podcast. Partner with Bet99 Sports. Make some picks this week, baby. Even roll with Nick. I, I'm pick. They're all right this week, but that's how we're going to conclude the show. Love y'all. Like I said, hit that subscribe button. Come on, CFL. See y'all next week, baby. <laughs>